the bang good ER32, call it Chuck set, revisit it. Coming your way now. Welcome back to the shop. So last week I posted the Banggood ER32 Call It Chuck set video and boy what an overwhelming response I received and I really do appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there was so much information there I thought I would revisit this Call It set review. Um, there was a ton of great input and I really have to thank you guys again for that. Um, I'm going to try to incorporate a lot of the recommendations with my means that I have. Uh, I'm limited on accurate test stuff, but I'll try to give this set a fair review. Um, and again, let you guys decide in the end. As a matter of fact, I even doubled down and bought the uh, Banggood ER32 uh, collet set and these are separate collets. This isn't, uh, these aren't the ones that came with the set. So I thought I would test these and see if they are at any better or any worse than the ones that come with the set. Haven't even opened them yet. I received the package and I just threw them in here. Uh, another reason why I got this set was it, it contains a couple more collets that the set does not include. So we'll take a look at that too. Uh, also, um, I made some changes to the uh, closing lathe. Um, basically, I just uh, I checked the uh, spindle bearings and I adjusted those. Um, they need to be tightened just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over back over to the closing and we're going to uh, first warm it up because that was one of the recommendations. Get it nice and warm, uh, get all those juices flowing. And then we're gonna test the, uh, the bearing play, the end plate on the chuck and uh, see what kind of uh, deflection we get there. And then another recommendation was uh, test the spindle nose at different locations and marking it off. So we'll do that and then we'll insert the uh, the collet chuck, the ER32 collet chuck again and test it at different locations and see if we get uh, better results. Um, I haven't touched this set since I did the video last week and uh, basically read your comments all week long and uh, really thought about it and said you know what this thing uh, deserves a revisit. So uh, let's get over to the closing and uh, go to work, man. I have the six inch three jaw chuck on it and I have a bar on it for our upcoming test. So uh, first things first, we're gonna warm it up. So I'm gonna run it uh, approximately 10 minutes in forward and 10 minutes in reverse. That should be plenty warm for our test. So here we go. Now reverse. Okay, let me reposition the camera. Uh, we're good and warmed up. And uh, I want to show you what the uh, manufacturer recommends for the correct torque on the bearings. Um, they mention uh, you tighten the bearings until with it out of gear uh, you get approximately one full free wheel rotation. So let me bring the camera in and we'll take a look at that. Okay, I have a blue dot, a sharpie mark on one of the jaws. Um, it's in neutral. I got the uh, spindle lock pulled. So it, it should just free wheel on the spindle. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go. Uh, one, one, swift, one swift turn. So let's see, where's our dot? So we're uh, almost, almost one full turn. So let's try it again. 
Okay, so we're, we're in the uh, range of the correct bearing preload. Okay, so now, yeah, that's good. Okay, so now let me set up the uh, indicator and we'll see what kind of uh, end plate we have. Okay, I got the Noga base um, with the Noga arm and the Mido Toyo half thal indicator. And I'm going to set it up on the nose of the chuck. Okay, we're tightened down. Uh, let me bring in. I don't know if you can see the indicator, it looks washed out in the uh, viewfinder, but um, you saw the bar I have in here. Uh, let's zero this thing out. You see it's loaded up. Hopefully you can see it. I'm on zero. Now I'm going to pull on the end of this bar up and down. And I'm pulling pretty hard. So it looks like I'm getting a little less than a half thou deflection at the end. You know what guys, I don't know if that's acceptable or not, but um, I'm pulling on this pretty hard to, to get it to move. And it's, it's just under a half a thou movement. So um, I wanted to show, share that test with you to show that we're in somewhat good shape here. So now uh, let's pop the chuck off and uh, take a look at that spindle nose. All right, let's get set up and I'll bring you in. We'll take a look at that spindle nose. As a matter of fact, I'll even run an indicator on the outside of it and we'll mark it um, appropriately. I have a Noga mag base on the uh, cross slide on the carriage. And I have the Noga arm coming out with the Mido Toyo half thou indicator. And I have it on the ID of the spindle right at the front of the nose. So I have it on the carriage uh, so we can move in the uh, spindle as we uh, test each, each location. So uh, let me grab a Sharpie and uh, bring you in closer so you can watch it as we do it. Got the Sharpie. Uh, let's load up the indicator. You can see it's loaded up here. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, there's our there's our half foul at the nose. Right about, let me try to find the high spot here. Like right there. Okay, so I'll put a Sharpie mark. Right here. So we know that's our high spot. So now we'll move the carriage in. I'm going to unlock the carriage. We're going to move it in. Oh, let's see. Let's go about there. That's about a, less than a quarter inch. So let's re-zero our indicator. And it, yeah, as you saw, it went up because of the Morse taper. Sorry about that. Brief interruption. Okay, so we moved in uh, about a quarter inch, um, re-zeroed. Uh, we're still on the high point where the original Sharpie mark was. So here we go. Okay, that one dropped down. So I'm gonna zero on the low spot, so we're just gonna mark high spots. Okay, I zeroed on that. Okay, we're coming up, coming up. Okay, that's the high point right there. Right there. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see the Sharpie mark, but it's not the exact same spot. So I'm gonna mark 
with just a dot on this one so I know it's the se second measurement. <clears throat> okay, that's the high spot. So let's come in a little bit more. Let me lock down. Re zero. Here we go. It's dropping all the way down there. So let's zero. And bring it up. All right, there's the high spot there. Okay, that high spot right there is the very first Sharpie mark there. So that one just repeated. Uh, so let me come in. Uh, I'm going to unlock. I'm going to come in. Relock. Re-zero. Here we go. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Okay, there's the low spot. Okay, let's see. Right there. Same exact, uh, the original Sharpie mark right there. So our half thou um, deflection is seems like it's following the spindle in the same spot all the way back. Okay, well let's do it one more time. Unlock the carriage. We're going to come in. We'll go in a little deeper this time. Relock. Re-zero. Okay, there's our low low. Bring it back up to zero. Same exact place, first Sharpie mark. Starting to look like a bent spindle to me. Okay, so now let's uh, let's set it up for the outside of the spindle. All right, we're at the Sharpie mark, the first Sharpie mark. Coming up, oh. Let me go to the low, that's the low, re-zero. Okay, let's come up. All right, that one's a little greater than a half thou right there. Okay, that's a different spot then. Okay, that high right there, let me come around one more time and verify that. Okay, we're above zero. That's part of the part of the problem. Okay, we're zero. All right, there's the high. Yeah, that's a different spot. Um, it is. Uh, <clears throat> if this was twelve o'clock. Our original mark is at 9 o'clock. So put a dot on the node, just a dot, so I know that's, that's our outside reading. Okay, so let's see. Yep, for sure, that's a different spot. All right, let's go one step further here and go up here. right there on that little nose. Uh, let me take a look and make sure you can see that. Okay, so now we're on the most inner part of the spindle I can get on. 
lock the carriage, load up the indicator, Okay, it's dropping, dropping. There's our low. Let's bring it to zero. All right, it came up to about there. And that is a different spot than the rest of them. Right there. Let me come around again because that's real close to the second mark. Okay, right there is right in line with that second mark. So yeah, I would say that, that repeat it from here. Um, okay, so, of course, when we put this Morse Taper 4 collet chuck in here, it's going to amplify this uh, half thou deviation in here. So, uh, let me get the collet chuck and, and put it in there and go from there again. Alright, so now we have our Sharpie marks on the spindle. I cleaned out the oil, I cleaned this real good, and we're going to set this in, and we're, we're going to test the idea of this at, at different spots. Um, I, I have a nut in here. A viewer mentioned that I did not need a draw bar uh, to use this in the machine. Um, not 100% sure about that, but um, I don't think I'm going to try it. So, But for the test, we're going to just check the run out. Got her seated in there real well. And I'll bring our indicator down here. And we'll start at the nose. And let me bring you in. Okay, let me bring this up a little. All right, we're gonna just go in about an eighth inch. So let's load up the indicator, get it zeroed out. Okay. Whoa, that's the low. I'm gonna have to bring it up. Okay guys, you see it. Let me get the low, low. Right there. Up, 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 up. That's six and a half thou. And that is not at the mark where we were getting our half thou run out in the, in, in the idea of the spindle. It's about oh, 15 minutes from it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move inside, see if we get the same thing. carriage. Oh, let me mark that first one too. Where this mark is, it was six and a half thou run out. So here we go. Okay, there's the low. That's a sheriff's helicopter you just heard. There we go. 
almost seventh out, seventh out. Let's see if it's in the same spot or not. Um, it's close, it's real close. It's real close to the mark. Put a mark there. Let's see if that repeats. So we'll come in, unlock the carriage, come in more. I'm almost bottomed out with the indicator right there. Lock the carriage. Load it up. Okay, that's a little over seven and it's right on the mark right on the mark the second mark okay so we definitely have we definitely have a run out issue with the call chuck as well um, and interesting enough it is not lined up with the half thou run out inside my spindle so I can almost guarantee you if I pop this out turn it 180 degrees um, it's going to give us the same exact results. As a matter of fact, hell, let's just do it. Let me pull out of here, uh, pop it out. We'll go 180 degrees, leave the marks, and see if they see if they repeat. Okay. Okay, let me bring it back in and we'll do the same thing again. We got it 180 degrees turned and let's go into the tip here. Just come in a little bit. I'm not going to repeat the whole process again, but let's load up. Let me lock this carriage. Load it up. Uh, the reason I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because we repeat it almost seventh hour run out in the same place all the way back. So let's get our low low. Well, look at that. Interesting. Right there's our high, and that's uh, that's three thousandths. And let me see. Uh, that's funny. That's right on our mark. That's right on the mark. Hmm. Let's go in a little bit. Do that again. Three thou. Let's see if it's right on the mark. It's real close. It's real close. Hmm. Well, goes to show if you play around with it, you could probably get it to run better. Okay, so let's get a collet and uh, a carbide end mill and run that test again. Um, you know, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this around a little bit off cam and just play with it and see if I can get it less than 3 thou run out. I just uh, moved this around um, all the way 360 degrees, uh, like a quarter turn at a time, and this is the best, this is the best I can get it right here.
it's a little over um, it's two and, it's two and a half thousandths run out that's the best I can get this guy so we'll leave it here I'll get a end mill and a collet and we'll go from there man okay I grabbed the 5 8 collet and I want to show you this thing has like saw cuttings in it it's like the swarf from when they cut the slots so I'm gonna to have to clean this out before we use the collet there's one there uh, there's an oh here another one here yeah so that's that's not not good crap my phone's ringing be right back all right I got this 5 8 uh, collet cleaned out and let me show you what was in it I don't know if that's gonna have focusing they were attached pretty hard too <laughs> anyway I got them out um, I'm gonna get a 5 8 carbide end mill uh, for our next test um, and be right back this collet is the one that came with the collet chuck set this is not a collet from the individual collet set that I picked up All right, this particular nut does not have a hooking shoulder um, like some of the other ones I've seen. So uh, I'm just going to pop it in. This one's not just popping in though. Oh, it's in there. It's in there. It's just barely holding it. Huh. Okay, that's funny because the other one's popped in. Interesting. Okay. So I got a, uh, looks like a Hanita rougher 5 8 with a welded flat. So we're going to go all the way in. We're all the way in. I'm going to back it up with a uh, adjustable this time. Okay, let me get the indicator set up and I'll bring you in. Here we go. That's terrible. Let me bring it to zero. Now I want to mention I have this collet chuck to where it had the least amount of run out on the ID. So look what we have here. That's absolutely unacceptable. Well guys, there you have it. Uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to get the 5 8 collet from the other set switch this out and let's take a look at that Okay, wrapped in plastic, coated in oil.
Okay. Well, they look the same. This one doesn't have any swarf in it that I could see yet. That one doesn't lock in either. Huh, I'm not liking that. There's something grabbing it in the tail of this collet. Yeah, there's something, there's a little pinch point back here. Yeah, I'm not liking that, not snapping in there, but what are you going to do, man? Yep, that's as, that's as far as it's going to let me go. That's an issue right there. So, all right, well, let's run with it. Oh, interesting. Look at that. <laughs> All right, let's bring it up. How about that? So this collet, we're a thou and a half, it looks like, run out. <laughs> How about that? So um, the inconsistencies look like it's the collet. So it looks like the separate collet set that does not come with the uh, chuck possibly could be a little better collet, but I don't believe it. I believe that these are just inconsistent from collet to collet. Um, you get what you pay for, man. Um, if you're looking for accuracy, it's not here. Uh, and when you're using tooling like this, you know, even as a hobby guy, I don't want to mess around with this thing playing with it each time I need to use it to try to get better results now if I was doing something in in one operation you know it probably wouldn't matter the repeatability is not there I can tell you that right now um, but if you if you're just going to use it uh, for parts that are just single operation where you never have to take it out of the chuck uh, just one time deal you're probably okay um, other than that you know, I thought I would give this thing a revisit. Um, it deserved it because of all the time you guys put into the comments, recommendations. Um, I hope this answered a lot of your questions. I'm sure it's going to open up a whole nother ball of wax, you know, or can of worms. Um, but, uh, you know, the results are similar from other reviews I've seen and from my past review. Um, you saw it, the runouts there. Um, it got a little better. We played with it. Uh, we got, uh, what was it, two thou, two and a half on the collet chuck. Um, again, my half thou runout is in the spindle and it repeated all the way through the spindle. Um, I'm not replacing this spindle. I might think about grinding it. Um, and if I do, I'll, I'll do it on video. Um, I'm really nervous about it, but. Uh, if I take my time and do it right, um, and then maybe after I grind this spindle, we can retest this guy again and see if we get better results. But we saw we get better results from turning it different positions and by changing collets.
So, you know, I'll let you guys be the judge. Uh, I hope you got enough information here to make a decision for yourself. Uh, the set itself was under $100. I can't remember the cost of the separate set of collets, but I will put the uh, link to that set uh, in the comments. So guys, uh, until next time, take care and we'll see you soon.